Hey everyone, welcome to the Union Pacific Railroad Evanston subdivision in HO scale. My name is Daryl Cruz, owner and builder of this layout and your host for episode 10 of season 2021. I can't believe there's been 10 episodes uh, to this point and it's only in the 10th ep episode that I'm finally getting to the point of laying some track down. So this is a major milestone, uh, episode 10. Uh, laying track in the staging yard. This episode is about the staging yard and we're uh, making further progress on both the east end and the west end. The east end is the uh, movable part that's going to be put under the stairs and of course the west end is a, a new construction. Uh, this is the first time that, you, that you'll be seeing uh, this. Before we get to that though, just want to uh, remind everybody about my uh, square site where you can order uh, all the things from my old N-Scale layout. I just posted a bunch of structures that you can kind of see some of the things that have been newly posted and are up for sale. Uh, if you want some uh, N-Scale equipment, make sure you take some time to check out the site. Uh, in addition to um, some structures, I'm also putting some vehicles on and I'm uh, working towards getting um, not only uh, structures but also uh, signals uh, lots of vehicles and right now I have a lot of houses up for sale uh, but make sure you just check out the site so that you can uh, see some of the things and you might want to pick them up I only have a couple of locomotives left uh, they have all been sold and things are going fast so if you want some make sure you check it out all right back to the railroad here you can see the east end staging yard the part that's going to be movable and will be pushed into the um, un under the stairs. Um, before we get to that, though, I did uh, pick up some more uh, equipment. These are scale train crude oil tank cars, and I got enough tank cars for two trains. I had these trains on my N scale layout, and you can see the uh, blue axles turning. That's one of the cool features of a. Uh, these cars as well as a lot of other cars um, so anyway I got enough to do two trains just like I had on the N-Scale Geneva subdivision and these uh, scale train uh, cars are very nice this is the um, rivet counter issue and then I'm trying to look uh, try to find some well cars for 53 foot containers the only thing I've been able to find uh, up to this point were the uh, Cotto um, maxi fives I think they are um, but I was uh, um, informed by uh, my friends at Lombard Trains that Rapido just came out with some 53, hus uh, 53 foot husky stacks so I was able to pick up some of those I really appreciate uh, the people at Lombard Trains uh, let me know about this and uh, hooking me up with some I actually missed the pre-orders and they were all sold out, but they were able to uh, uh, find some. I was able to get six of them. Um, and then I also got uh, some of these Athern Long Runner flat cars. I always thought it was cool the way they would have a, a trailer span two flat cars. Uh, seeing that a lot and watching trains. And uh, so I thought it was a, a cool car and it definitely is modern. And so I picked up four sets and then uh, they come either with two trailers or without any trailers and it's 50 bucks more with the two trailers um, so I went the cheap route and just got the non trailer ones and then I picked up some Walther's um, uh, trailers and you get two for $25 instead of $25 each I also use Walther's uh, containers for the um, Husky Stack well cars. So these are a couple of the new equipment that I'm uh, finally getting on the track. Uh, these two cars are permanently coupled together. I didn't actually do that. See, it still comes apart. Uh, so these are the newest acquisitions for my HO scale Evanston subdivision. And I'm definitely looking forward to uh, getting trains running. Here we have the um, the west end of the staging yard 
And I built this uh, a little uh, unconventional way. Rather than build the bench work and then put it in place, I actually built this in place. I put uh, one 1x4 one on this wall, and then I put another 1x4. You can see where I screwed it in. I only attached it in a, number, a couple of places to the wall. But anyway, I put the one 1x4 one on one wall, another 1x4 on the opposite wall, and then I basically just uh, start adding pieces of 1x4s to the right dimensions and made sure I got everything level. Um, there you had a look at the legs I'm using here. You can see how level everything is. Uh, for the legs, I'm using some uh, pressure-treated wood that I uh, had left over from my deck. I had to ooh, exactly level there. I had to rip some 2x8s down to 2x6s, and so I have a bunch of 2x2 two two pressure-treated wood that I'm going to use for the legs. Uh, this Empire uh, um, uh, level has really been very helpful. Uh, one thing, I have to make sure I'm not obsessive about it. This one's 0.15% out of level. But you can see it's still within the lines for the bubble. So I think that's within toler tolerance. Uh, but anyway, I have to kind of make sure I don't get obsessive about it um, and spend time making sure everything's exactly 0% level. I do I did hit a couple of them, but I figure if I get 0 .05, 0 0.05 or 0 0.10 or 0.15, I think I should be okay. Uh, but I wanted the staging yard to be as level as possible to alleviate any problems that I might have with the curves. Alright, so here's the staging yard coming out from under the stairs. Uh, you can see how I've been painting the ceiling. I'm not putting in a drop ceiling. I'm just using a spray gun to just spray everything white. I know a lot of people when they spray their ceilings in the basement they use black, uh, but I didn't want, I thought that might make it hard to light the layout. So I went ahead and made everything white. So everything's going to be highly reflective and we'll be able to see everything. And then uh, I also, of course, put in some cross members here. Um, I'm using three eighths inch plywood, which is pretty thin. Uh, but I've always had great success with it as long as I keep the supports uh, at minimum of 12 inches. I should say a maximum of 12 inches. So uh, there's no place where the wood has to go more than 12 inches before it is supported by the bench work. So it all came out pretty good. Everything is square. Um, now I was uh, trying to uh, figure out how to get the plywood from this staging yard into the next room which is under the stairs so I cut a piece of plywood to fit uh, but then I was worried about that not being supported correctly so I went ahead and uh, attached a couple of 1x4s I put a gap in there because there's a stud in the wall that I want to uh, span so here you can see I just screwed a couple of one by fours uh, to the edge of the plywood that's fitting in there and then from this is under the stairs now you can see I put in four screws to attach it to the drywall so it will, won't warp or move around at all and then I'll also use that those one by fours to screw the um, the east staging yard under the stairs all right here we have some more plywood added and then I also am going to transition then from the staging yard to the actual layout. I'm going to be using uh, L Gruder construction. So you can hear here you can see uh, some one by fours and two one by twos uh, put together in an L upside down L. There you see the pressure treated one by two, uh, two by twos also. I don't use uh, bracing for the legs uh, when I have it attached to the wall. And here we have a momentous occasion. My first 
uh, installation of track on the Union Pacific Railroad Geneva, excuse me, Evanston subdivision. And uh, right off the bat, I kind of um, bent my first spike. So it didn't start off real well. I was kind of not used to using these big spikes for um, HO scale. N scale uses very small spikes, and then I will use a uh, an awl or whatever that's called. I can't remember. Oh, a punch. Use the punch then to actually put it in there. Uh, I never was had to do that with N scale. You just kind of push it in all the way with your pliers. Um, but it's a little bit harder with these bigger spikes. So um, in this case, I push it as far as I can, and then I use the uh, punch to push it in the rest of the way. Now, depending on where the spike goes into the wood, I can, in some cases, ab I am able to push it all the way in. Just depends how much glue is in, in any particular location. I here you see I'm, I bent one of the spikes. That's the first my first spike, and I bent it. Good job. I am using a Code 100 Atlas track here, Atlas Flex track. And I will not be using this on the modeled part of the layout. I'll be using a Micro Engineering Code 83 uh, track. But I was able to get a, a really good deal on some uh, Atlas Code 100. Uh, track. I had to buy um, 125 pieces at a time. It's like a big thumbs up. My first piece of flex track. Anyway, I was able to get 125 pieces really cheap. Uh, so I went ahead and did that for the staging yard. Now, as you know, I'm kind of concerned about uh, the uh, auto racks going through the sharpest curve. So I went ahead and got a scale trains. Uh, tier four Jevo, and I thought, well, let's see if I let's see if I can pull this around the curve, and I was able to pull it around the curve without any cars tipping over, so I was pretty happy with that. So I thought, well, let's try two scale trains Jevos. Each scale train um, Jevo has a drawbar pull of like six ounces or five ounces, I think it is. Anyway, it's something crazy. Um, was not able to do two, as you can see. So I decided to go with a Scale Trains Tier 4 Jevo and uh, Athern SD70. The Athern SD70 has a draw bar pull of only three ounces compared to the five ounces for the Scale Trains. And it actually does pretty good. So that's a total of eight ounces of pull and it doesn't quite do it. Um, so I think it, I think I'm going to be just fine. Um, I think the scale trains uh, tier fours are brutes. I think they would pull by themselves all 28 cars through the staging yard. Now here I have two Athern SD70s. So this is a total of six ounces of draw bar pull. Man, the cars have no trouble. So anyway, I think um, I should be just fine with uh, having the auto rack cars go through the sharp curves. Now I thought let's try two scale trains, tier fours on the second track. So the inside track is 30 and 5 8 inch radius. This track is 32 and 7 8 No. It's 32 and three quarters, and it almost made it, but not quite. And then here's a show of the clearance, and there's no problem with uh, these long 89 cars clearing through. So I think I'm going to be in good shape. I'm trying to make sure everything is perfectly level, so the only additional drawbar pull will be from the curves. And I think I should be able to pull 28 of these uh, auto racks through. 
uh, the sharpest curves. All right, I went ahead and painted um, the plywood, and then I kind of put the fast tracks turnouts that I built in place to kind of see how they would um, fit in the staging yard. Now, on on the prototype, they don't do yards in this in this fashion. They usually do a ladder where you have five turnouts in a row and they all turn in one direction um, but this is a staging yard I'm not trying to be, be prototypical I'm trying to maximize the number of cars that can be stored uh, here you can see I'm tr making sure that the uh, switch machi machines that go under the layout will not hit any of the uh, cross supports so there's the cross supports and then you can kind of see there's another cross support and you can see where the Turnout machines are going to go, and everything should clear just fine. So anyway, this particular arrangement allows the tracks to be longer. So if I did the five in a row, it would kind of cut back. Um, here you can kind of see how the painted ceiling looks coming down the stairs. I was able to paint all of this. So this is actually ready to go. And you can kind of get an idea of how the layout's going to look finished-wise. Um, the floor will be painted so you won't see the concrete and then there'll be some kind of skirting from the layout down to the floor and then you'll have the, the actual model trains. Uh, so that's where I am at this point. I'm going to try and do more um, videos as we go along. I, um, it's been almost a month since my last one. I'm going to try and do another one next weekend and try to do them weekly if I can. Uh, but anyway, thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate you um, taking an interest in the Evanston sub and I hope you enjoy the series. Take care everyone.